Hello, hello. Welcome to this huge collaboration, How To Botanical. Over the course of the month, you are going to find loads of videos and information on how to create a botanical journal. And this awesome collaboration has been put together by the marvellous Rachel and Bella Crafts have to say a huge thank you because this is a massive piece of work that you've undertaken here um, and I am absolutely thrilled to be part of it so thank you so much for asking me. I'm obviously day two, my, um, my task is to talk about sewing on paper today and this is very much aimed at beginners. So in the description box down below, I'm going to make a note of the hashtag. So if you if you create along with us, you know, use the hashtag. And I'm also going to link every channel that's going to be involved over the next month. So please make sure you check them out on a daily basis. Go and look at what they've they've done to help support you create a botanical journal, especially if you're new to this. I have created a freebie. Um, and it's in my Facebook group. I've created two actually. This one is a digital kind of kit, if you like. So we've got tags and we've got pockets and we've got a collage page. These elements here, I've just quickly printed that on plain paper so you can see it. These are the elements we're going to be using to sew on today. Um, because like I said, this is aimed at beginners. So the second freebie is a kind of sewing on paper tips for beginners fact sheet. And um, that's also going to be in my Facebook group, but I want to talk about it as well. I'm going to talk through every point of that fact sheet. And while I do that, in the background, you'll see the first video that I created. I wasn't very happy with it. So I've removed the sound, sped it up, and I've used that as a, back a background for the tips that I'm going to give you if you're brand new to sewing on paper. Now, I am no expert. I have been sewing on paper for a few years now. I have found what works and what doesn't work, but that's for me. You might find things a little bit differently. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now play the part with the tips and tricks. Tip number one is buy the best machine you can for your budget. Avoid the mini machines. A lot of people I know have had trouble with those. I don't mean go out and buy a brand new machine necessarily. There are a lot of really good quality secondhand machines out there. Just make sure you try it out first. If you can, you can check out charity shops. You can check out Facebook Marketplace and obviously eBay. Number two is the needles. You can use any needle on a sewing machine and to sew paper, but remember the bigger the needle, the bigger the hole. I always buy standard needles for general paper and fabric sewing, and that's a 1280 needle. Sometimes it's shown as 8012. If I'm using a thicker substrate, such as a canvas cover with cardstock in the middle, then I will use a denim needle, and that's a 9014. Number three is tension. The standard sewing machine tension is between three and five. So starting at four is a really good place to start. Your machine may have a line on your tension dial showing that standard tension for the machine you're using. If your stitches are too tight, then you need to loosen your tension. If your stitches are too loose, then you need to tighten your tension. And I would go up in half increments and trial out on a scrap of paper. So stitches too tight, loosen your tension, and that's a lower tension number. If your stitches are too loose, tighten your tension, and that's a higher tension number. Number four, stitch size. Okay, try not to use too small to stitches because it will compromise your paper and it might tear. Trial the stitches on a scrap of paper. If you're using a straight stitch, a three to four is a good size stitch. And if you're using a thicker substrate, then you could go for a slightly larger stitch. And that means the needle is not going in and out of your paper quite so much. If you're using a zigzag stitch, anything between two and two and a half is great. If you're using it on thicker substrate, again, maybe something a little bit larger. 
Number five, using adhesives when you're sewing on paper. If you want to use glue before you sew, that's great, but never use a double-sided tape. It will clog up the inside of your machine and you'll end up with that sticky residue on your needle. Use the glue you're comfortable with. Fabri-Tac is a great one to use and you can also use art glitter glue or a glue stick and other white glues. I personally wouldn't use Mod Podge because it is a bit sticky and I would never use hot glue. Whatever you use, make sure it is completely dry before you sew onto it. Let's talk about machine maintenance for number six. I would keep your needle sharp. I know lots of people give different advice on needles, but you will get a better result with a sharp needle. You can use compressed air to clean around the foot area of your sewing machine and the bobbin area and that avoids a build up of all of that paper dust that you get and fabric dust. Um, and the other thing I would say is be prepared to get your machine serviced. If you have problems, you will need to service your machine. Number seven is troubleshooting. If your tension is usually okay when you sew and you suddenly have large knots of cotton appearing and everything is jamming, before I change my tension, I do three things. The first thing is I will re-thread the main cotton on my machine. The second thing is I will re-thread the bobbin. If the bobbin is thread unevenly, then I will rewind the bobbin too. And number three is change the needle of my machine. Once I've done all these three things, my machine will usually sew well again. If it doesn't, I will do all of those things again. A blunt needle or a bent needle will certainly cause jamming. And if that still doesn't solve the problem, then I know it's probably time to get my sewing machine serviced. So that's what I would recommend you do before you change your tension. If you need to do your tension, go up in those half increments. This fact sheet will be in the freebie section in my Facebook group. I hope you find it useful if you're a beginner. Sorry that was really fast, but now we're going to move on to actually doing some sewing on paper. So I really hope you found that useful. Um, and you can, like I said, you can watch it a second time and slow it down to just watch what I did with that stitching if you're interested in seeing what I did with the kit. So this page of the kit is what we're going to work with today. Um, I've just to cut out one of the tags and backed that onto a lightweight cardstock. I've used file folder. These are ready to go. I've got a couple of pieces of scrap um, scrapbooking paper there or cardstock from Tim Holtz. And I've also got a few tags that I've made. They're kind of not the same size as these, but they're near enough. So we're going to kind of put together a couple of tags as well using different sewing techniques. And we're also going to put together a little snippet. Um, I've also got, oh, they're right here. Um, I've also got a few, I've got two sheets of plain paper that are perfectly, you know, ready for a journal page. And I've got some book pages also, which are ready for being turned into a book page. So let's work with what we have here today. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some things together ready to take to the sewing machine because I have to use a different filming setup for my sewing machine. Now, this is a very, very plain tag. Um, I don't think I want to do too much on this to take away from the sewing. But what I've done is I've just grabbed my text stamp. So we're going to do two different sewing methods on here. I'm going to use this little botanical image on one of them. Let's use it on here. And we're going to just do a stitch around this piece. And I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of glue. I mean, it's a very, very plain, simple tag, but it's going to be quite effective. For this one, we'll do something a little bit more fancy. So I'm going to take one of the oval pieces. Now, like I said in my tips and tricks, we do need to let that dry, but it's art glitter glue. That is 
that is really quick to, to dry. So on this one, we'll talk about how we go around the corners when we're sewing a tag. Now let's let's look at this. Okay, this one I'd like to turn into a pocket, but I want to reinforce this first. Just grab a piece of, this is just a piece of cartridge paper that I'm gonna sew round. So we're gonna sew that to form a pocket for our journal too. And then with this one, let's make a kind of, let's make a cluster. So, or should I use this one? No, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna tear this paper and give that a little ink. Now I'm gonna start by layering this on and I'm just gonna put a small bead of glue down here And this piece, I think, goes that way. I'm going to put a small amount of glue along here. And I'm going to line that up with the top there. And this piece, let's have, let's have overlapping slightly there. Okay. So that's quite a cute little, it could be a tuck spot in your botanical. We've got the Encyclopedia of Horticulture there, so that fits quite nicely. And can we do, can we do a second one? Okay, let's do a bit of fabric on this one. Got two little pieces of fabric scrap here. I'm gonna run a little bead of glue here. And then another piece here. I'm just going to slightly overlap that. Okay, so this isn't glued down. We don't need to worry about that not being glued down. I'm going to glue the back of this little tea card. And that will catch wherever. Okay, so that's another little piece. This is a quite a tatty piece, so I'm going to tear, tear that, tear that, ink around here. And I'm just going to run a quick bead of glue down that edge, put that into place. So we're going to end up with three little embellishments, a pocket, we'll sew a tag and then we'll, we'll sew these two too. So we're going to start very simple. I will get the sewing machine set up and we'll get started. So the sewing machine is on and ready to go. I've got a clear as clear a view as I possibly can and obviously I've got the iPad in the way so it's a little bit tricky to sew like this so I apologise if, if things just go away now and then. Um, we're going to start off with this really simple little embellishment, two pieces of paper and we're just going to sew them together. Now I've got my stitch length to three and a half. I'm going to turn this upside down because you tend to sew on this right hand side. Now, on my foot, I don't know if you can see, but there are two little grooves. There's one here on the right and there's one here in the middle. Now, you can buy presser feet quite easily and they all look different, um, but this is a standard presser foot. This gap down here is where we're going to sew. Now, when I'm doing a straight stitch, I line the edge up of what I'm sewing, which is going to be this here. In this case, I line it up with that middle groove. Your presser foot may not have a groove like this. So you need to trial your machine out with a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to slide this in place, bring my foot down. OK, and I line the back of this up with the edge of this paper here as well. And... I'm not going to worry about doing back stitching and forward stitching. Um, I like the tatty look. I leave my threads hanging. I'm just going to do a stitch. You can go as slow or as fast 
as you wish. I'm now at the edge, so I'm going to lift my needle, pull that out. I've used a black cotton. I tend to use a black cotton, plus it's a lot easier for you to see. And just the difference that makes. So that is one simple botanical embellishment to go on our journal. It couldn't get much simpler than that. So let's do this one next. I'm going to do a straight stitch along here and I'm going to do it in exactly the same way. So I'm going to put it in my machine. I'm lining this edge of the paper up with that middle groove and I'm just going to sew. And we have that at the moment. Now I'm going to do a very straightforward zigzag stitch. So I'm going to change my stitch setting. I'm going for a size two zigzag stitch. Now the line I'm going to use on my paper is this line here along the edge of this text. But when you're doing a zigzag stitch, you want to line up with this middle groove. So I'm just going to bring my presser foot down hide that light a bit so you can hopefully see here's my groove lined up with the edge of this paper here so now I'm set up to do a zigzag stitch I'm gonna just gonna sew as I'm sewing I'm keeping that groove lined up with that edge And there we have a second little botanical embellishment. We could do more sewing on this if we wanted to. I like the fact that that's a bit of a flap. Because we've used zigzag stitch and we've lined up with that line, we haven't gone over the text. So that's number two, straightforward straight stitch and zigzag stitch. Let's, let's do this one next. We're just gonna do a straight stitch all of the way round our tag. Now, when I'm sewing a tag I start from this bottom corner I spin it round I spin it round and start with that corner but I do it exactly the same way my center groove is lined up with the edge of my tag and to get an even stitch I try and keep that the case as far as I possibly can so I'm just going to do a straight stitch until I get level with this corner of my tag Okay, I didn't swap to a straight stitch, so I'm going to do that now. And I'm using a three and a half size stitch. Easy done, easy done to not swap your stitches over. We've now done that, so let's sew our straight stitch. Okay, I've stopped at that edge. When your needle is inside your work, Lift your presser foot slightly, spin your work until your lines line up, your groove and the edge of your tag, and then drop your presser foot again. And now you can carry on sewing. And I've stopped level with the next corner. Again, my needle is in my work, lifting my presser foot, spinning that round and dropping it. Now this time, because of the stitch size, I'm not quite lined up with that groove. So what I do is I angle that groove towards the edge of my tag and I'll start sewing until I even up again. The light on the machine really causes some issues from what you can see. So I'm now at the next corner, lift, spin, and drop that foot and then say. And there we have it, our sewn tag. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something a little bit more fancy again. I'm gonna go back to a zigzag stitch. So I'm back on a size two zigzag stitch. I'm going to turn my work this way and I'm actually going to sew along this line. <coughs> so I've got this line lined up with my centre groove. So my zigzag stitch will go over that. I kind of 
have to guess because of the tab, the label on here. If I turn it round, I've not quite gone far enough. So I need to do another stitch. Lift and spin. One more stitch. <clears throat> Try that again. That's much better, but it's still not quite perfect. Now, the good thing about a zigzag stitch is it's much more forgiving than a straight stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my needle out of my work. Now, very, very carefully, I'm going to just lift my presser foot a tiny amount so I can move my work over a little bit. Drop that presser foot again. So I've lined up with that line again. My groove here is now lined up with my line and I'm going to sew. And there we go. So now we're going to sew this one and we're going to do a zigzag stitch all of the way around. Now we're going to use exactly this. Oh, we're going to use exactly the same method as we used for this. Only this time we're actually sewing on a physical item. We're not just sewing over the line. Put down. I really do wish this light was not quite so bright. I don't know if I can turn that off. So I'm just going to hold that. You can see my groove is lined up with the edge of my paper. So let's sew a zigzag stitch. And there you can see that's sewn on. I'm going to go back to a straight stitch. I've got my stitch length set to three and a half and I'm going to line the edge of my T card up with that groove, that centre groove on my machine. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around. And there we go. It's a really, really simple little embellishment. Just torn the top of that off to make that a little bit shorter. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do a curvy stitch using our straight stitch. So I've got my stitch set to straight. I'm going to line up like I have before and start off with a straight line. But what I'm going to do is when I sew, I'm going to sew up, down and up again. OK, so I'll do that. So you can see I've got a wavy line. Now I'm going to do another wavy line along the bottom. Spin that round and I'm going to do another one. And again, I'm going to finish that off. OK, so you can see I've got a wavy line all the way around. Now, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to sew a second row of stitching, but I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to come across here and then I'm going to overlap and I'm going to come down. OK, and I'm going to do that all the way around to give this a kind of decorative look, but just with a straight stitch. So how cool does that look? That's going to make an absolutely fantastic pocket. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to sew a zigzag stitch around a corner. So the biggest thing to remember is keep your middle groove lined up with the outside of your embellishment. So a paper is lined up with that centre groove and I'm going to go really slowly. And what I'm going to do periodically is lift my foot while my needle is in my work and just slowly turn this work. So let's do a couple of stitches. Once you get the hang of it, once you get the hang of it, you can move quite fluidly. But while you're in that practice stage, you can just lift your foot, move your work and do a couple more stitches and then lift and turn and do a couple more stitches. 
and you can just keep going round as slowly as you need to using this process. It's very, very straightforward. It seems a lot more complicated, but as long as you keep the edge of your paper lined up with that centre groove, you'll be fine. I really wish this wasn't so bright. Um, so can you see how neat that actually is? Okay, we're gonna try that oval again. I've covered up my bulb, so hopefully you'll be able to see this a little bit more clearly. Let's start our stitching. And again, I'm gonna lift my foot and keep that line lined up with the edge of that oval. Okay, so when you're sewing directly onto paper, there's a couple of things you need to remember. You might need to, to turn your paper to get it in between your machine. The other thing is you're going to see the stitching on the other side. Now, quite often, especially with this one, for example, it's kind of framing that flower. So it's, it's perfect. It looks okay, but it doesn't always work. Now, as well as all of these things that we've been doing, you can sew the same techniques you can use to sew your tabs onto your page, you can use to sew ruffles onto your page. Um, these are just the basic stitches that people tend to use when you're creating a journal. So let's get this pocket onto a page and do something with these embellishments. So these are some of the pages that I've already used. Let's... Um, Let's add this page in here too. Where should we put it? Let's put this one at the front. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break each of these pages up with a plain tea dyed paper page. So just using these freebies and two sheets of plain paper and three book pages, we've got you know, the start of a botanical journal that has been sewn. This page here looks, obviously there's a lot of writing on here. So let's use, let's pick a page. Let's use this for our pocket. So I'm gonna cut this out. You could always sew a pocket directly onto the page, but for now we're gonna glue this. So I'm gonna glue this, this edge and this edge. And I'm going to add that, not quite to the edge of my page. Let's add that tag. This is one of the pockets I created and another tag. And I've put that over the plain book page. We've got two pockets here that I haven't used as yet. So I'm going to add this. Actually, I'm going to add this one over here. And then I'll add this pocket, this tag here. That's the envelope I created. Here we have another pocket and another tag. So we've also got this area here. I want to add my three embellishments. So let's pick a page. I'm gonna add this to the top here. I'm only gonna glue this edge because this could always be used as a tuck spot. So let's add that. This is quite a plain page too. So let's add this, but this one I'm gonna overhang so we get some of that hanging out of the edge of our page. And again, I'm only gonna glue this side. 
So that now hangs over. And this is the last kind of plain page. So I'm just going to add this and I'm also going to hang that over the edge slightly to turn that into a, a little tab. Okay, so we have a few pages and we have some things sewn. I know I didn't go into detail with the kit, but I'm sure you're going to be able to take these techniques and sew all of those elements. This is one I also made. Um, I just wanted to show you the difference in the pages. So this one I've used an Edith Holden book and it was a little bit more grungy looking. So I've gone ahead and splattered this, this particular set of pages. I've added my tabs. I've also done some splatters on the tags. This particular page here, what I did was I took that collage page and I just backed it with some music paper done a little bit of stamping on it added a bit of washi and again that really changes the look of this particular page and I've added one of my little button clusters to that envelope on this one too okay so we have I mean it's almost a journal it's almost a journal so there we go those are pages I've made just using those four pages of digital and some book pages like I said I really hope you found that useful I'm really sorry that the light on the sewing machine I just could not angle the camera to get that out of the way and I really don't want to use tape over the bulb for too long at a time anyway thank you so much again to Rach and Bella for putting this together thank you all for watching I do really hope you found something useful in this video um, sorry about the light on the bulb again and please check out all of the videos that will be coming this month I will see you really soon take care bye